Who is your next witness? John Matthews. Counsel, we will break at noon for lunch. Yes, sir. My direct won't take long. Please raise your right hand. Please have a seat. State your name and spell it for the record, please, sir. John Edward Matthews, J-O-H-N-E-D-W-A-R-D-M-A-T-T-H-E-W-S. Good morning, Mr. Matthews. Good morning. If you would, tell the ladies and gentlemen of the jury when you were born and where you were born and raised, please. I was born April 15, 1945, in the big town of Centerville, Mississippi. Is that where you were raised? Raised between Centerville, Mississippi, Norwood, Louisiana, and Baton Rouge, the two former towns. Probably everybody can fit in this room. Gotcha. If you would, tell us a little bit about your educational background and your work history, please. I am graduate of Southern University School of Engineering finished in electronics. I worked in the computer industry for 25 years in repair of mainframes and peripherals. I was drafted into the military in 69. I went through basic and advanced infantry, finished both. We shipped to Alabama Redstone Arsenal to repair our test equipment and calibrate the missile systems over at Huntsville. After getting out of the military, what kind of work did you do? After leaving the military, I went back hired on with Control Data Corporation in the computer industry. Stayed in Minneapolis for a while, getting over my PTSD and relearning the computer business. Transferred back to Houston. Worked at NASA for a period. Then I transferred to New Orleans. When you were in New Orleans, did you also start to open up or do some side business for yourself? Yes, I did. When I moved home, I always had the idea of being an entrepreneur. And when I was in Vietnam, a captain tapped me to open a lounge for the enlisted men, so he gave me all of the necessary items to open a liquor facility in a game room, and also taught the mathematics portion of the GED exam in that same building he gave me. And so, when I left and came back to the United States and looking for a business to get into, I gravitated toward the liquor business. At some point, did you open a bar room or a daiquiri shop in the uptown area of New Orleans? Yes, I did. In 1977, I rented a place at 3400 South Claiborne, which was just a shell, and I did most of the work and opened a liquor store, and I rented out the space that I had for a daiquiri shop, and a gentleman left me and he gave me three daiquiri machines for the rent and told me to sue him if I wanted to. So I couldn't sue him. I didn't have enough money to sue him. So I tried to sell the daiquiri shop, and they wanted to buy the liquor store. The people wanted to buy the liquor store. So... I sold the liquor store and went into the daiquiri business in 91-92. The building at the corner of Louisiana and Claiborne, is that the 3400 block that you were just referring to? That is 3400 South Claiborne. At some point, did you stop becoming a tenant and actually purchase that property? I purchased the property somewhere around, I don't know, 84, I guess. And did you develop it and have some tenants? And I think in 84, I only had two buildings. That was where the restaurant is and the daiquiri shop. Well, actually, the old liquor store. I think it's a communication shop now. In the daiquiri shop. Actually, let's change that. Where the restaurant and the communication shop is now, that was the building. So later on, I made a loan, $115,000, I think it was. It made the building look as it does today. I did all of the construction there. I am going to show you a photograph marked as Government's Exhibit 177. Is this the property? This is the property, yes. Does that picture accurately reflect how it looks? Yes, sir. Your Honor, I would ask to introduce and publish 177. So ordered. That's the photograph, Mr. Matthews, up on the screen? Yes, sir, that's it. When you bought... When you redeveloped the property, did you take undertake efforts with regards to lighting and security of the property? Yes, sir. As a matter of fact, I had security cameras many years before I improved the business. As a matter of fact, my cameras were used in several other shootings. But later on, I added new and additional, more effective camera systems 
four cameras on the inside, two on the outside, that watch the whole property and beyond. What about lighting? Did you put any, add any additional lighting to the property in the area? Yes, I did. What did you do? I added right by where the, where you can see the money mark. If you come straight out to the street, there's an energy line and I had two lamps put up there. One 10,000 watt and one 4,000. I mean, 400 and I think a 10,000 watt. The 10,000 watt was pointing to the right and the 400 was pointing to the left. And on top of this money mark sign right here on the corner, I had two other lights, one point down Louisiana Avenue and the other one point towards the other light covering the whole lot. And right across the street, the city has had two lamps that illuminated the area. Thank you. At some point, I understood that when your tenant who had the daiquiri shop left your building, did I understand you that you undertook to operate a daiquiri shop at that location? Yes, sir. Was it just a place that sold daiquiris, or was it more than that? It was a place that sold daiquiris, beer, liquor, a gathering place for all of the neighborhood and from the Loyola, Tulane, Xavier, and the surrounding areas. Plus every basketball game between the Hornets and whomever and every football game with the Saints, especially the playoffs. But we fed folks on Wednesdays, and every game we prepared food on the lot and fed folks. Did you come around to actually developing a second location in another part of the city to have a daiquiri shop slash bar room? Yes, I did. Where was that and when did you develop that second location? Let's see. I must have been in business about, that must have been 2010 also. Should have been 2010 when a gentleman that had the lease on the property came to me and asked me if I would take it over. And I said I would go out and take a look-see. So I went out and looked at it, and I said, yes, I'll take that over. And where was that second location? That was at Diamond Road, almost to Morrison, almost to the corner of Morrison. This first location that we just talked about was Uptown. The second one was more out to the New Orleans East area. New Orleans East, yes, sir. I am going to ask you to reflect back to the evening of May 13th, 2008. Was your business in operation at Louisiana and Claiborne that night? Yes, sir. What was going on in your establishment that evening? Again, we were having a great crowd pulling for, most of us was pulling for the Hornets to be San Antonio. And we were serving food and, I mean, folks were coming and going and we were having a great time. What was your role or what part in operating your business that night were you performing? When I have a large crowd, either I have a security guy or I am the security guy. This particular night I was security, so I'm sitting at the door. At some point, did you become alerted to the possibility of some shooting in the area? Yes, I was alerted. How? I had a FEMA trailer on an empty lot at 3424 South Playborn, which was part of my property. And my lady was back there and she called and said, I hear shooting. And I peeped out and said, there ain't no shooting. And I went back watching the game. Then she called again and I said, I'll be out. So I walked out. I walked all the way to the end of the property and looked and turned around and coming back. And I said, oh hell, they're shooting. And they coming this way. And I ran back inside of my place and locked the door. And I don't know if I had pulled the pistol or I just had my hand on it and I was standing in the door. So you retreated back to the interior of your establishment? That is correct. Explain, if you would, to the ladies and gentlemen of the jury, how your door is constructed and what abilities it gives you to see outside. Okay, my door is basically a metal frame building made of angle iron with bars on it. And I used, I think, about a quarter inch plexiglass, which is a fabric that's supposed to repel small arms. And I had that cover in the area and made the, gave me the ability to see from it and for my customers when coming in to see in and yet give us a bit of security. After you retreated back inside, did you remain by the door to see what would happen outside? I remained by the door because when I was making haste to get back inside, I heard a car squealing the tires. The tires were squealing. And what I thought had happened was that somebody had got caught in a crossfire and steered swiftly 
to turn the car over. So I was trying to find a car that I thought had turned over. Did you see a car that turned over? No car. In the moments after that, did you see any action or activity in the vicinity of the parking lot of your establishment? Yes. I could see a head over near that same pole that I was just telling you about the lights were connected to going both directions. And there was a head bent over, sort of like that. And I could hear gunshots, maybe five shots, four or five shots. If you're looking out of your front door, are there any landmarks in your parking lot where this person that you saw the top of their head with their head down when you were hearing the shots, where were they located? Yeah, it was right in front of that pole, right in front of the check cash and sort of facing that area. Did that person come closer into view to your position at some point? Well, yes, he did. How? Instead of going to his right, he came to the left, which made him come across in front of the daiquiri shop with all of the light shining down on him. So I did get a good look at him coming that way.